Hello, I'm Mike. Welcome back to the workshop. This week, we're going to finish off this remake of my grandfather's toolbox by adding holders for all the tools. So, let's roll the intro and get into it. I spent quite a lot of time over the weekend working on this and the arrangement and what tools I want to go wear and what I want to fit in. And I've made all my fixtures very quickly just to see how everything fits together. So I'll bring it out and show you and then we'll start making these for real. Here on the front we're going to have the sort of classic design for this joiner toolbox. So we're going to have our saws in the lid that we've made. Now at the moment like I said, this is all very rough. I'm just using screws in place of fitted pieces we've put in to hold everything in place. But this design works really well. At the back then, I'll have my saws. My saws, pardon me. At the back then, I have my chisels, which are in their own little holder. Our marking gauge, which will be on a little hook. Our square, which also is on a little hook. And we'll add another one down lower here for the rulers, the bit and brace, and the mallet will just fit in there loosely. Now all these fixtures will work just as well on the tool wall as in the toolbox. And a little tip I have here, I normally don't recommend double-sided tape for fine woodworking because it leaves residue, but for this kind of stuff, it's a godsend. Because you can just put a piece of double sided tape on your rough fitting, kind of pull it off, put it in where you want it, and that'll allow you to maximise your space. So, let's start at the front and work our way back. We'll start here with our saw tip. So before we get started, let's have a look at this before we make a proper one. This, is a very, this couldn't be a simpler system if you tried. All you have is, we'll have two little pieces here that'll hold the handles in and the longer saws. And all this guy is, one second, I'll get the I'll take it off. It's literally just a strip and the wide part the blades will pass behind the wider blades and then this thin part has a little notch here that holds the smaller saw in place and then in the bottom of it we're just going to put in a metal pin and that metal pin then will hold it in the bottom and we'll just put a screw in the top. We'll probably use an old style flat head screw for that. So let's see what I have here. Yeah, I have some, I have some black, uh, I have some black number eights here. They'll do, that'll look age appropriate. So let's get started. So. <coughs> I just cut my scrap here to length based on the example that I've made. And the great thing about making quick little jigs like this is you now have something to match. So we're just going to transfer the marks that I have on this onto the inside face of this guy. So the top one is there, and the bottom one. I made this a little bit short, so I'm just going to make it a little bit longer. And we will just glue those pieces in in the same orientation that they were on the example. Then we know it's right. And I will put a bit of glue and I'll clamp these. And I'll come back to it. I'll work on other stuff. But for you, we'll be right back when this is set. I just had a little while to set. We're good. So what we want to do now is we want to do a pilot hole and a countersink for a flathead screw. It's a little bit short for doing what they have, so that's why I'm countersinking it just a few mil. That'll do that. 
that. And then we give it a really powerful. This is wider than the shank. So to do the first bit of installation on this, I've just done the carpenter's dowel trick that I showed in the last video. All I've done here is nailed in a few panel pins, I've cut them off flush, and lined up here in our centre. We'll get everything nice, square and flush. Now I'll just give it a little tap tap. At least need two indentations. And what I'm going to do is drill those out slightly. Then I'll stick two new pins into the bottom and they'll be my pins for holding it. And I'm using another old trick here. If you need a pilot hole for a panel pin, simply cut the head off a panel pin and use it as a drill bit. I'll leave this five or six mil proud. And when you do the first ones, don't go very deep because you want to make sure you have a bit of grip as you dry them. So I should now just be able to line this up with those pinholes. Now we're in nice and tight. We just want to put in a pilot hole for the tread. Right here. Well, we'll just double check that everything else will slide in. Still good. Double check it closes. And we're still good. Okay. Obviously you can see we're missing our little handle closers. So let's do those next. So these little handle holders could not be simple. All we have here is a piece of scrap. And we're just gonna line up our handle on that. Doesn't have to be Exactly right. We're just going to line our handle up here on this piece of timber. It doesn't have to be tight, tight, so we'll just go around it loosely here with a pencil. So I know that's my panel saw. The same here with this huge distant rip. Exact same thing. So just go around it lightly. Then it's only a matter of cutting the shape with our jigsaw and then sanding them up to that line, making sure we get a nice fit in the handle. And I'm happy with that then. I drill a few pilot holes or the flathead screws that we're going to use to attach these. Another tip here is to use modern self-tapping screws to attach it first and then take out that screw and put in your flathead screw. This creates a pre-made pilot hole and helps you with alignment. Let's test it, shall we? I consider that a win. It's easy enough to get the minute out. 
They're held securely. They cannot go anywhere. Right. Let's move on to the next set of saws and another saw tail, which is inside here. So, the second saw tail that we're going to keep our penon saws in and our shorter carcass saw couldn't be any simpler. All it is is just two pieces of timber that we cut into with the saws themselves and the saws slip down into it. And that's it, really. But, seeing as it's me, we're going to go a bit fancier. So I have my two pieces here. And I'll stick two of them together here, I'll hold them together, I'll just transfer my marks from my template here, I'll cut those three grooves and then to keep them separated and to keep them at a stable base we're going to put in a couple of stop dovetails on this very thin piece at the bottom that will allow me to put in some nice small fixings just to hold it in place. So the process for these is exactly the same as any other dovetail. We're just going to mark our pins or our tails first. It depends on your preference. Then we cut those, match them to our piece where we're going to line it up and then mark the opposite off it. And then after setting the depth of our piece of material here, we will cut the cheeks and for this I like to put in a heavy knife line and then cut to it with my chisel this gives me a shoulder for my saw to track in and then working from both sides I will clean out that middle area give a little bit of fettling and after that we should have a nice tight joint that will be exactly the thickness of our bottom piece this is a great joint in cabinetry as well to hold spars and stuff in place. So that was completely unnecessary. It was kind of cool. So the dovetail here is it's a blind dovetail, which means it doesn't come through, but it just gives those a nice little <whistles> joint together. So I'm just going to clean these up, give them a little chamfer, a sand, and we'll glue this in, and then that's ready for the toolbox. Then I think we'll work on getting some sharpie stuff in there. Chisels. So, for the chisel holder, I'm going to have to bring you to our cheapest toolbox in the West. Because we're going to use a very similar methodology. So you can see here with our cheapest toolkit in the West, what we've done is we've cut pieces out that are the width of the chisels. And it's attached to the backboard. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put a backboard in behind this, but it's the same general principle. We're just going to cut slots the whole depth, as wide as our chisels, and then that we create our chisel holder. We'll keep our chisels in position, stop them rattling around, and stop the edges getting damaged. The only difference is it's going to be very short in this one, just to allow us to be able to lift the chisels up and out in between that and the lid. Now unfortunately there's no golden rule for this. Uh, the only way to effectively do this is to just lay them out by eye, making sure you have a sufficient gap between them that you can get the chisels in and out and then just adjust it until you're happy. And then it's just a matter of cutting along those lines. I like to cut either centered on the line or slightly to one side to give me a little bit of freedom. And then I use the chisel that it's designed for to clean it out to make sure that I get not only the width correct, but the depth as well. And you can see here now how I check that. I lay it down flat on the piece I'm cutting it on 
and just put it in and out making sure that it goes to full depth and doesn't bind if it does I take a little bit more out and I do that for all the chisel so it's all chippity choppity out let's check what works Now I've left a little bit of waste on these because I, I don't think these ones are going to live there forever but it will be ones this size. So just make them a little bit wider and deeper than they need to be but they'll do what they need to do there. So now we'll glue this up. And when I'm gluing it up I just take care not to get too much glue into the grooves. <laughs> prevent the effort of cutting them to the size so you know you don't have to try to clean glue gunk out of the inside. So this could not be simpler, it's literally a U-shaped piece of timber that this is going to hang on. I also want to put a little gate in here to stop it rattling out. Obviously this is a great one for a tool wall, hang up all your American cages like that or whatever that you're using. So I'm just going to transfer this onto a piece of stock that matches everything else and I'm going to use a little bit of cherry here to make our Closing gate. So cutting this is pretty much the same as cutting a dovetail. I cut down my cheeks and then bulk out the waste using a coping saw and then just clean it up with a chisel. The little gate that'll hold the tool in is very simple as well. All we do is just cut a piece maybe 10 or 15 mil longer than the area it's swinging up to and same width and then just using a flathead screw in this case but a screw with a non-treaded shank at the top we're just going to put in a pivot screw that down and then rotate the piece as we're cutting it with a file to make sure that it doesn't impact on the tool so it doesn't lift the tool up when moving it up and down and that's that little system ready to go I mean you could use that anywhere for any number of tools and it holds them in securely now for this I don't want to be insulting your intelligence by showing you all I'm going to do is cut a saw line down here that this will fit into. Now split it off with we'll a chamfer all the edges so it looks nice and clean. And the same then for the rulers. The only difference is the groove in the ruler is going to be wide enough to hold the three rulers I'll be using. The last thing to do then before I put these in is a bit of Danish oil because I don't want to get oil on the MDF back because it'll look crap. So yeah, I'm going to cut these screws, I'll show you when the two pieces are done, and then we can start assembling it into the toolbox. There we have those, just very simply, like I said, a groove, I put a chamfer on the edges, it'll stop that rattling out. The same thing here with the rulers, we'll just slide down into that groove, and that'll stop them falling out because it's wider than the middle point. So, then you all time.
So here we have all our fixtures ready to go. That's only a matter of plugging them in. So let's do that. I'd almost forgotten about the plane. The plane is very simple. It's be almost impossible to show you in the toolbox. But if you imagine the plane is going against this face of the toolbox, and all we have is two little slips like that that we're going to tack down to the bottom just with a few panel pins. That'll hold the plane in place, stop it rattling around, stop it getting caught in other places. Like I said, that's almost impossible to show, but that's what we're going to do. Just box it out. I think you can <coughs> kind of see that inside there. Slots into that. And that stops other stuff getting in on it. Now, fitting all this, I did film, but it you know, mostly shots in my back. But the only tip I have from this really is that uh, when you're doing work like this, the carpet tape does come to your salvation again. It's a great little second set of hands. In this case, it holds the fittings in place so I can screw them in from the back. Now, we'll cut to the glory show. When someone would make a tool or own a tool, they would stamp their name into it. And I had done this here. I had lovely shots. Beautiful. But my camera died. So I'm just going to have to show you the result. It's a lot easier to see with the dark. But <clears throat> I got better as I went on. But at least now, in time gone by, someone will find this and know that I made it. So there we have it. My grandfather's toolbox. And now all the tools are in there nice, safe, easily accessible. I hope you enjoyed this little two part series. If you stay to the end of the video, thank you. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and all that fun stuff. And absolutely do try this at home. Now, I have my toolbox. Time to get to work. Now this does weigh a little bit. Um, well in fact it weighs over 19 kg. But luckily I'm a mountain amongst men. Anyway. See you next week. <laughs>